Now Jordan and I are going to do a task where we compare that zero to 60 time to us actually getting in the back seats of this guy because it's a two door hatchback. All right, getting to the back seats of the 500E. All right. Some wheel spin there. More wheel spin. <laughs> oh, my ESC was blinking. It was mad. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's 60. Oh, okay. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, eight mile road trip. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cheap EV series where we're gonna buy a used electric car under $25,000 and we're coming up to the end of the series but we couldn't let this one go without looking at the Fiat 500e, a spicy Italian compliance car uh, with a 24 kilowatt hour battery. So the big knock on this car always has been its range. Like the e-Golf, it's low. It actually has, funnily enough, a very similar net capacity to the e-Golf and similar range. It's only 80 miles. There's also no DC fast charging to speak of. So this is absolutely a city car, but those modest specs shouldn't mean well, you can't look at it because guess what? They're still actually pretty cheap, even in this crazy market. By the way, how spicy is it? What motor are we talking about? Well, driving the front axle is basically every EV we have looked at in the series. Here, we have one motor, but that motor is capable of 111 horsepower and just about 150 pound-feet of torque, getting this guy to 60, zero to 60, in, uh, they say, according to Fiat, eight and a half seconds. But let me just give you a quick tour around the car. Uh, you can see it is a Fiat 500, and in my view, that's honestly a really good thing. I, of course, I drive a two-door Mini Cooper, so maybe I'm biased, but I really love the styling on this kind of a short, compact car. Uh, it weighs just 2,900 pounds, too, so it is a light, light vehicle, which means that I'm suspecting, we'll get into this in the driving section of the video, but I think it's going to be quite fun to drive. Now, if I just tour around it, you can see this lets you know it's a Fiat 500e because it has those aero wheel caps. I think these are either 15 or 16 inches, uh, the tire should say here. These are 15 inches we have on here, but I believe you could get optional 16 inch wheels with an eSport package that also added a cool kind of orange accents to the mirrors and uh, the sides here. You could also option a sunroof, and that was basically it for options on this car. It was really simple. Also, funny story, the Fiat CEO at the time said that he hoped people wouldn't buy this car because they were losing money on everyone they sold, even though originally this cost over $30,000. Wow, how times have changed. By the way, this 2019 model we're looking at from uh, courtesy of Echo Park in Thornton, Colorado, uh, this one is selling currently for 18 grand. Yeah, that's a lot more than they used to be, but that's still pretty cheap for a, uh, you know, usable city commuter car. So let me open up the trunk and let's see what kind of space we're working with here. It's a Fiat 500e, but because it's a compliance car, right, they made this basically for California regulations. They actually only sold it in the states of California and Oregon, but of course it's been a while. They've trickled down to Colorado. We don't, uh-oh, <laughs> I don't know where the level one charger for this is. Uh, Hopefully the dealer has it somewhere. It's not in the trunk, but it's supposed to be there. Uh, there's an air compressor for our tires. Um, so it did come with a level one charger. Uh, you could also level two charge it, of course. It would support 240 volts, but no DC fast charging. You can see this whole trunk floor is actually quite high. That just because they had to fit the battery in there. But you still do get, you know, somewhat of an amount of trunk room. I think it's about the low seven cubic feet, uh, Jordan just reminded me. So that's by far the lowest we've seen in the series, but it's a hatchback. So you can always just fold your seats down once you've uh, put the headrest down. So, you know, I don't think that's a killer issue. Now, if we go around here, I can show you the fuel door, which in this car, you know, everyone always complains, oh, is it a front or rear fuel door? Of course, in a lot of conversions, it's usually the rear because that's where the gas cap was but um in this car it's not that much of an issue because it's not that big so honestly i feel like with a lot of charging stations you could either do what you want you can back it in you can pull it forward you probably still have uh, clearance on that cord to get it here because it's such a short car now this is what we're talking about yeah level one and level two charging dc fast charging not an option i should mention all these specs I've been telling you they apply to the Fiat 500e as us Americans know it there is a new 
spicier, longer range, much more compelling version of this vehicle sold in Europe that we just don't get. It's very sad. Uh, Kyle's actually taking a look at one. So if you want to see his review, check that video out. But unfortunately, we don't get that. We're stuck with this. But you know what? This is still a pretty great cheap car just because of how much it's depreciated. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know what you think of the styling, but I personally am really partial to it. It is a 500. It's quite spicy. Also, liquid cooled battery pack. That's This is the only car we've looked at in this series so far, aside from the Chevy Bolt, to have one of those. That means that you don't have to worry about battery degradation so much. It's actually thermally managed. So climate be damned, the battery's probably fine. However, no heat pump. So aside with that limited range, you're driving up hills, you're using the climate inside, that range is gonna go down even more. But let's get into the range, the driving dynamics, all that fun stuff in the driving part of this video. Setting off in a Fiat 500e, right off the bat, we have a manual parking brake. I love that in cars. That's just, oh, it makes me feel like a drift god, even though I'm not. <laughs> We've got a 12 volt DC uh, pin, so you can, you know, stick in two USB-A ports or whatever you want there. But you also have USB built in and you had an aux, so, you know, your friends could make this car the life of the party if they had a good playlist. And you have, just like an E28 M5, your window controls or the power windows on the middle console of the car. That is pretty baller. I honestly love that. Then your PR and D are these cool buttons, super distinctive uh, feature. Was this, um, Jordan, you drove a Fiat 500, yeah, the so gas one. This was only for the E ones. The gas ones had a physical shifter or a manual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but aside from that, do these controls kind of... All identical. Everything's identical. All the center consoles. So I had the last year before the screen, but the uh -huh. screen came. Not that nice of a screen. <laughs> they have this little TomTom -tom type GPS thing yeah. in there. Not great, but... Navigation is standard, though. That's cool. But it's, it, yeah, it's basic TomTom -tom maps. Now, if you uh, point over at the gauge here and you can look at that, uh, the gauge cluster in this car, I'm honestly kind of a fan of. It's like classy it's simple it's elegant you've got your cool battery gauge there we're at 87 percent now you got your representation of uh whether you're using power or you're charging with regen so i actually am not sure if this car has a one pedal mode i believe it does it but does not it doesn't no okay. one pedal driving any fiat 500 e which is sad that is Missed opportunity really <laughs> unfortunate uh so maybe in some ways as a city car that's not honestly great and i don't think there's a brake hold either no. Yeah. I mean, granted, this came out in 2012, so that's 10 years ago before we had all these EVs that had one pedal driving. That's true. And I got to give this credit. You know, I, I, I keep talking about my Mini Cooper. There is a Mini SE, an electric one. Not much more range than this car had in 2012. Sure, it's a more sophisticated car. It's based off of Mini F56. But honestly, I think Fiat was early to the game. Yeah. With having a cheap electric hatchback. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's awesome. And even if their CEO didn't like it, I think they did a good job engineering it. Yes, it's Fiat build quality. I was noticing when I was adjusting the steering wheel that like <laughs> yeah. this mech, you know, FCA, that's going to break. FCA of this era, not that great. Unlike the Stellantis of today, which is stellar. <laughs> There's an interesting thing about this car. None of the cars we've looked at, we all talk about, oh, it's not a Tesla or Rivian. I don't, can't just get in and have it start. Well, I'm, this is a real man's car. Not only does it not have a start stop button, you actually have to use a key. Uh, isn't that a wild concept? Yeah, no ignition sound. It's just chimes and it says ready. It kind of is like <laughs> a, if you want to make this car feel special, it's like an original Tesla Roadster in that way. Or I think it's the perfect, smart EV yeah. uh, that Kyle has also has a key, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So not many EVs these days with keys, but this is one of them. Now, I really mean it. I pressed hard and now we're in drive. So let's uh, tear up the streets. By the way, there's a Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet over there. So just a lot of good cars in this area. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of rare legends though, there's there's not that many Fiat 500Es for sale in Colorado, are there? No, there's just two and they're <laughs> both at Echo Park of Thornton. So uh, if you want a Fiat 500E and you live somewhere in the Colorado area, check them out because that's your only option. And like I was mentioning earlier, I think that's because this car was only made for California and Oregon. Yeah, California compliance car. and. Uh, it has its place, like all the other, or most of the other cars we're testing. A lot of them are California compliance cars. They just happen to be kind of available all throughout the country if you're lucky. Now, unlike a Corolla or a gas car, we don't need to turn off the AC to give full engine power. This is an electric car, so let's go for it. All right. Some wheel spin there. More wheel spin. <laughs> oh, my ESC was blinking. It was mad. <laughs> 
Oh, there's 60. Okay. Uh, that seemed like it took about eight seconds. It was faster than the Eagle for the Kia Soul, for sure. Yeah. About a th the same amount of time as it took for us to get into the back seat to this thing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to time. I hope you watch that time comparison in the intro. But uh, this was um, in the, let's say, the Fiat 500 lineup, for those familiar, right? You could get a Fiat 500 Turbo. This is similar in acceleration and performance to that, right? So yeah, like you're saying, this is 111 horsepower, 150 pound-feet of torque. So the Fiat 500 Turbo of this day was 126 horsepower, 150 pound-feet of torque. So comparable. Then, of course, you could have the Abarth, which was just stupid fast and stupid fun. Yeah. This was not performance-minded. You have natural performance because of the electrification, the electric torque, obviously, which is great. But this is so much more get-up-and-go than my Fiat 500, which was the base. Well, it was a nicely optioned one, but the base powertrain, which was 100 horsepower. <laughs> which I didn't even know you could buy cars with that little power. Especially 0 to 20, 0 to 30. Uh, you just go in this car, your traction control is really mad at you, but it's fun. Or you can just turn it off right right there. Yeah, so why don't we do that? Because <laughs> we're cool. Not quite enough power to really... <laughs> we're, we were starting up a hill, but yeah. <laughs> uh, still, like, we, you know, beat that Mazda 3, so that's something. But yeah, I'm going to say this is an excellent city car other than like you said the one pedal driving that would be so nice to have and we just don't yeah and now if i do lift my foot off the accelerator i do of course there's region in this car but it's not that strong uh and i'm using the brake pedal i can tell the brake pedal actually does blend a little bit of region before it hits the friction um so that's nice but it really could have used a lot more regen. Now, it, it is surprising. You said 2012, right, was the first year they made this, the first yeah. model year. Here is a 2019, so Fiat really stuck with it. Yeah, really minimal changes throughout its entire eight-year lifespan. They finally discontinued the 500 in the U.S. in 2020, which included gas and electric variant, which is sad because, like you said, 2021, new Fiat 500e in Europe, it's awesome. It's, it's literally what I would buy if mm -hmm. uh, we had it in the States, but we, we don't. Yeah, that one does have more range, DC fast charging, bunch of goodies. By the way, um, this is a great city car and really only a city car. Could you road trip this? Probably, uh, but you would really be uh, stopping at a level two. I hope you like long stops. <laughs> I hope you like driving 80 miles a day. <laughs> now, well, you could, could, granted this is a 24 kilowatt hour battery, yeah. so you could on level two charge this in four hours. Or so, less probably. Or less, yeah. um, so, cause it's such a tiny pack. Uh, so if you're doing 20 to 80%, you probably, you know, yes, it's not at all DC fast charging speeds. The cars you look in the series typically do 50 kilowatts, yeah. either through Chadmo or CCS. Uh, this just has a normal level two connector. Uh, uh, but yeah, you could even plug it in your house and overnight you're reliably going to charge it up at level Easy. one. Yeah, easily, which is really cool. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, one perk of this being a city car. You know, if you take your Rivian, which I've done a few times, to a grocery store, plug it into a level two charger, you come back out, it gained maybe half a percent or mm -hmm. because the battery's so big. In this yeah. car, that equivalent would be like 8%, which is, you're like, oh, I got some actual charge. Uh, yep. <laughs> and that small battery means it is light. Like, I really am appreciating the handling dynamics here. And it's, um, as a result, I think, just a super, super tossable city car. Really easy to park, I think, on this guy, even though you'd get the world's most minuscule backup camera yeah. uh, with the screen. It's fine. You don't, I mean, visibility isn't amazing. It's a little bit claustrophobic with the C pillars, but it's such a small car that I don't think it's a huge concern. Yeah, it's missing the sunroof option, which is sad. And then, you know, on mine and most other 500s, you could option a Beats Audio, which was actually a fantastic audio system. You couldn't get that in this. I don't know why, at least not the years I, I knew of. So uh, I would probably buy one, get the sunroof option, source all the Beats Audio components, and then just have a freaking amazing commuter city car. And mods, uh, just take some ABART badges and stick them on. Oh, yeah. This is one of the easiest cars to jump into if you're used to a gas car. I mean... This feels entirely like my Fiat did, except it is a little bit quicker because of the yeah. electrification. It's not going to intimidate anyone with acceleration. Like, honestly, even the Bolt we've looked at, the Bolt is fast enough that I feel like uh, you get, you know, you get Grand Mata for Chevy Trax into the Chevy Bolt. Mm. It's almost like you've got to tell her, be easy on that pedal, because that car is so easy to spin the wheels on, especially with those Eco tires. This Fiat 500, uh, e, that's not a concern. It's just powerful enough. Yeah, it, it, it can spin tires for sure, but uh, 
that just means you need to stick your tires. I'd put some PS4s's on this thing. I'd auto cup twos. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if they make those for the uh, do they make tire. them in this size? <laughs> I don't know. Michelin. They uh, probably do because Miatas. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. But um, overall, driving impressions. What would you say, Jordan? Um, really solid. This is actually my favorite one uh, we've tested so far. Better than the Bolt. Yeah, I think so. And uh, the, you know, it's so different. The Bolt almost feels like an outlier in a way, even though, it, which makes it such a good bargain because you're getting way more range, about ground up EV architecture, versus this one is you know technically a gas car converted to electric, and you have consequences for that. But I really still love how this works and feels and looks. You know, if I was in a town where I didn't need that many miles of range, this would be absolutely my first choice. And it almost was when I lived in Texas, my commute was just a bit too long, but yeah. I love it. Yeah. If your commute can justify it, or if you just need a car to get around town, especially as a second car, I think this is probably the best one we look at the series, especially if you're a driving enthusiast, because this is honestly just, this is a fun car. Yeah. All right, on to the buyer's advice section for the Fiat 500e. And Jordan, I'm going to be honest with you. Pretty it's simple. really simple. <laughs> One, there's not that many of these, especially if you don't live in California or Oregon. Uh, and two, there's really not that many options. Uh, standard equipment on this was pretty good. Nice. Because yeah. I think Fiat didn't care enough to really give you that many trim levels or options, which is, I think, honestly fine. Very simple. It's a compliance car. What else do you want? So we've put in Auto Tempest, Fiat 500e. Uh, let's say just near Boulder within a 500 mile search radius. I'm going to put in a max price cap of 25 grand. Not that I think we'll find that many that are more expensive because uh, we don't get that new one here. And so we're looking at anything between 2012 and 2019 model years. Now what we're finding, let's see, uh, here's one of the ones in Colorado, the other one that Echo Park also has. This one's even cheaper because it's a 2015 model. $13,000, that's solid. On it and not that many miles. Also, liquid cool battery pack. I have to mention on this. So, like, as long as your, you know, your brake fluids in order, like, I that's think got some sportier accents. It's nice. got the eSport package. <laughs> it, it's a hot hatch. Uh, and then we've got the uh, this one we're looking at, which is eighteen grand. So, now that I'm seeing the thirteen grand one, I mean, if we or thirteen seven, if we were gonna buy one, probably that's that. the one. Yeah, yeah, that's like half a budget. Almost. I mean. Kyle bought his Nissan Leaf with the difference between these two. Yeah. <laughs> That's a first-gen Nissan Leaf right there, even in this market. Now, here's another one just under 13 grand. that's in Utah. Uh, higher mileage, probably wouldn't do that one for us, but if you were in Utah, maybe that's your only 500D. Who knows? Uh, okay, there is another one in Utah, but it's... For $11,000. Also the same dealer. It seems like certain dealers just have this weird monopoly on 500Ds. <laughs> I don't know if they had a special trading program going yeah. or something. Uh, then there's one, and oh, another one in Utah. Okay, just brimming with 500Es. They all seem to be reliably, you can find ones under 15 grand. Here's an $11,000 one uh, from 2015 also. A lot of miles on it. Yeah. Someone really loved this Fiat 500E. That's cool, well-driven. Well-driven, good condition paint with the eSport package. And yeah, really all you need to look at is, do you want those orange accents? Esport package. I think it also gave you some minor interior bells and whistles, but nothing that fancy. Uh, you also did have the sunroof option. So yeah. if you want a sunroof, do look for one of with those, but that's really it for options. So Fiat 500e, if you're just looking at absolute, look, I don't want to spend a lot of money, but I want a fun car and I'm never going to take it on road trips. It's just my second car or I just don't drive that much. Yeah, it's a great compelling option at a really solid price from what we've seen compared to other EVs. Yes, and it's held up. You know, nowadays I think the bolts are going up in price because people know how good those these are. The 500E <laughs> people aren't paying attention to as much. So stay tuned for this car. And uh, we're, we are going to be looking at another car by now, by process of elimination, you probably can figure out what it is. Uh, hint, it's German. But we'll be looking at another car for this series. Uh, but that has been the Fiat 500E. It's awesome. Thanks so much for watching.